Hi and welcome to this transition year higher level maths geometry revision module video. This video is the third one in this module. So this module is being put together to help you to revise what you've already studied at junior cert higher level with the aim to make sure that you understand it thoroughly before moving into the leaving cert higher level material. So this video is going to look specifically at the circle theorems. So we're going to revise what they are and then we're going to use them to answer some questions. So there are um, a few theorems that we would have learned to junior cert higher level, so this is our chance to revise them. So the first theorem is theorem 19, the circle theorem, and it states that the angle at the centre of a circle standing on a given arc is twice the angle at any point of the circle standing on the same arc. So just a little bit of revision of our terminologies. Where we're talking about arc, we talk about this piece here. So a part of the circumference. Notice how these two angles both start and end at the same point on the circle. And that is important. So no matter what angle we know, we'll be able to work out the other one. So if we're given this one here, we simply have it to get this one here. Or the other way around, if we're given this um, circle, I'm uh, sorry, if we're given this angle at the circle, we're able to give, get, calculate the angle at the centre of the circle simply by doubling it. So if you can remember from our first geometry vi uh, video, a corollary is an add-on to a theorem. And this has a corollary one, which states that all angles at points of the circle standing on the same arc are equal. So no matter what angles I draw, if they start and end at the same point and they touch the circle, they will be the same size. Uh, this theorem also has uh, three more cor corollaries. So corollary two is each angle in a semicircle is a right angle. And the corollary three then says if an angle standing on a chord BC at some point on the circle is a right angle, then BC is a diameter. So if you actually look here, corollary two and corollary three are the converse of each other. So one is saying that um, each angle in a semicircle is a right angle and corollary three is basically saying if you have a right angle, then you must basically have the diameter. Corollary four then, if A, B, C, D is a um, is a cyclic quadrilateral, then the opposite angle sum to 180 degrees. So cyclic quadrilateral becomes very, very important at leaving cert higher level. So cyclic quadrilateral is a four-sided shape that sits within a circle. So specifically, all vertices must touch the circle. So notice here, it's a four-sided shape and each of the four vertices is on the circle. So straight away we know that A and C, because they're opposite angles, they must add up to 180 degrees, and B and D, again, because they're opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral, they must add to 180 degrees. And the converse of this is also true. If the opposite angles of a quadrilateral sum to 180 degrees, uh, the quadrilateral must be a cyclic quadrilateral. So now let's take a look at an example. <clears throat> the points A, B, C and D are shown on the diagram. They are all on the circle K. A, B is equal to A, D. So the length of A, B is equal to the length of A, D. And the length of B, C is equal to the length of D, C as shown. The sizes of some of the angles are marked. So we know we have 100 degrees there at A. We then have X at C and Y at B calculate the value of x. So the first thing to notice about this is we have a cyclic quadrilateral, okay, which is a four-sided shape within the circle where all vertices touch or sit on the circle. So therefore, remember, I know that opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral must add to give me 180 degrees, which gives me x must be 80 degrees. Calculate the value of y and show all of your workings out. Now, if we knew d, we would be able to work out, if we knew the angle at d, we'd be able to work out the angle at b. 
but we don't. So at this point, we've used everything we can with cyclic quadrilateral. So what I need to do in this case is I need to draw something that will help me. Now notice how they have two sides of the quadrilateral are the same on the left hand side and two sides are the same on the right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually cut this like this. Okay, and what I'm doing is I'm actually creating two triangles and more specifically, I'm creating two isosceles triangles because here they've told me these two are equal, here they've told me these two are equal and actually that makes my life so much easier because now I have a triangle, I know one of my angles is 100 degrees, meaning the other two must add to 80 and because they're the same, I have 40 degrees and 40 degrees. Please don't make the mistake that we have bisected this angle. So we have not bisected the angle at B. We have actually just drawn a line from B to D, but we have not bisected the angle. We have to work separately to make sure we have the correct size on each side of this new constructed line. I have an 80 degree angle here. I'm still in an isosceles. So I have 50, well, I have 100 degrees left divided equally between the two angles which means I have 50 degrees and 50 degrees. So calculating Y is the 40 degrees plus 50 degrees, which is 90 degrees. Now, an extension here that they didn't ask, but they could ask is tell us something or draw another conclusion from this diagram. Now, if I drew a line here, I could say that AC is the diameter and the reason I know that is because of corollary 3 which states that if I know I have a right angle triangle which this is because it's 50 and 40 so there's my right angle then this must be the diameter so I actually have two triangles here where I have um, so I have two triangles here both of which are right angle triangles if you had divided your picture like this, then we could say that the angles were bisected because it was coming straight down in an isosceles triangle, but just be very careful about making that assumption. So let's take another um, example. And in this example, it says the diagram shows the triangle ORST inscribed in the circle K. So that means drawn within the circle K. The line segment ORS is a diameter of the circle. And Gavin says the size of W must be 90 degrees. State one result on your course, a theorem or corollary that shows that Gavin is correct. And that is corollary two. And it's the idea that when we have a triangle drawn in a semicircle, it must be a right angle triangle. And that is leading from the circle theorem, which states that the angle at the center of the circle is twice the angle at the circle. So if this is 180 degrees, then this in turn must be 90 degrees, okay? So now let's take another example here. So P, Q, or an S are, are points on a circle with center O. P or S are the size angle P or S is 32 degrees and that's given to us in the diagram. They want us to find S, O, P, which is this angle here. So by using our circle theorem, we can know that the angle at the center of the circle is twice the angle at the circle. Therefore, the angle SOP is twice the angle at the circle, so it's twice 32 degrees, which is 64 degrees. So then it says find SQP. Now notice that S and P are both the base points of OR and Q. So using corollary one, we know that for any angles drawn from the same points or any angles at the circle standing on the same arc, they must be the same size. So therefore, the angle SQP is 32 degrees. So hopefully you're seeing now that any of the circle theorem questions, they are quite straightforward as long as you know your circle theorem. So they're important to know and to be able to use and to be able to quote when needed.